In the 60s, um, we were beginning to grow. We had the ski area was developed. Uh, we had ski areas in the, in the canyon. Heavenly Valley had moved from the end of Ski Run to its present location. And it was attracting a year-round economy as well as, obviously, year-round visitors. And more to the point, perhaps, in the medical issue, um, we had very good care medically by physicians and nurses, but we did not have facilities. We had the medical clinic, and we had, during the early years, during the 30s, 40s, 50s, we had doctors who came up, and they'd be here for the summer. So we had care there, but if you needed care year-round, and we had a year-round economy, you had to go to Placerville or to Carson City or to Reno or to San Francisco. And the care that was given was excellent care. We had marvelous doctors, Jim Whiteley and Ken Smith, and they brought in Pete Irving. Uh, we had the first woman doctor, pediatrician, Ruth Jolly Hauk, all in the same practice. And then uh, when Jim learned about the opportunity through the Burton, Hill Burton Funds. He got hold of his friend, Lee DeLauer, and from there, the whole structure was put together to raise the funds to have Barton Memorial Hospital. Barton Hospital, and I've been to other hospitals as well, this is the best. And we are connected. The people in this area are connected to Barton. I love it. We had a restaurant called the Contiki, and my husband was the fundraiser. He took care of the, raising the money. And your husband? Neil Olson. And the children's playroom is, I built that when Neil died. And so our restaurant was closed in the winter because we had no winter business. And so the, the men would all meet in the morning at the Contiki and have brandy and coffee and then they would go out into the community to get $200 from everybody that they could find. So that's how it started. Today's an exceptional day. It's the beginning of our 50-year anniversary for Barton Health for providing services to South Lake Tahoe in one of the most important arenas, which is health care, which is near and dear to each one of our hearts when, in fact, we need services. Barton has a very rich history, as you know, of serving this community. And one individual who is a great historian, great speaker, too, is Kurt Ledbetter, who wants us to talk to you about the history of Barton. And Kurt is on our board, as everybody knows. So I would like to turn it over to Kurt. I'm honored to have been asked to speak to you this afternoon on behalf of the Barton, Ledbetter, and Gross families. And um, just a brief history. Following World War II, the 1950s, and the growth in Lake Tahoe, year-round community members saw the need for more advanced medical services in South Lake Tahoe. The leaders of Lake Tahoe at that time, including my family, decided there was a need for a local hospital. The community got behind the idea and began the hard work needed to advance the medical care in our area. In those early days, this was a difficult task, and it relied heavily on the community support. The need for emergency services and full-time physicians was intricate to the growth taking place in South Lake Tahoe. The ski industry was growing, the Olympics has, had put us on the map, and the casinos started driving year-round visitors to our community. This made it important to provide medical care to our full-time residents and our guests alike. My grandmother, Faye Barton Ledbetter, my aunt, Alva Barton, and my father and mother, William and Beverly Gross Ledbetter, found an opportunity to help make the hospital a reality by donating family property with the understanding the hospital would be named after my great-grandfather, William D. Barton. Along with matching government funds, financial help from the community, and countless fundraising efforts, those early landmarks were reached. The hospital association was formed. The woman's auxiliary was to follow. A six-acre site was selected, and in June 1961, a site acceptance ceremony was held. A hospital snowflake design was created with areas for future expansion identified. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in the summer of 1962 as the hospital construction started. 
Then Barton Memorial Hospital opens on November 23rd, 1963. We're here to look back at each of these landmarks and remember all those people who stepped up to the plate, saw the need and said yes to whatever requests were made. Be it an employee drive in their small businesses, contributions as members of the association, donating hours as members of the auxiliary, as employees of Barton Memorial Hospital, as the lone physician taking call or as a community leader to prompt action to improve the area for themselves, their families, and future generations. As with any leading organization, Barton has seen exceptional growth and occasional setbacks. It has evolved as the community and healthcare industry and systems have changed, keeping with the times. It has been 50 years of progress through the employees, doctors, board members, association members, auxiliary members, foundation members, the famous Elvis Presley visit, I added that in memory of my mother, and of course, the many, many volunteers. It has been 50 years of exceptional patient care, and I'm proud to have been a part of the continuing vision for the finest hospital and continuing to meet the ever-changing community needs. On behalf of my family, including Brandy and Dan now, and those of you that are with us and those that are not, that have passed away, I would like to thank you for being here to celebrate 50 years of excellence. Happy anniversary, and let's cut the ribbon. <laughs> <laughs>